assalamu alaikum guys welcome back to my channel i pray that you are all in the best of health and iman welcome to ramadan vlogs 2022 can you believe it alhamdulillah we thank allah for making us of those who witnessed this ramadan may he accept it from us and may we complete this ramadan as well Amin. Thank you guys so much on my previous video for all of your well wishes all of your du'as regarding my marriage thank you guys so much i appreciate it i could not respond to all of the comments but i promise you guys i read all of the comments and i just kept saying i mean i mean i mean so thank you so much so this is the first ramadan vlog and as per usual we are going to read quran together at the beginning of the vlogs um and just talk about a few of the topics that come up today i'm going to start with surah ali imran because i feel like surah baqarah is so long and i spent most of last year talking about surah al baqarah so that's what we're gonna do after that i'm going to share with you guys some of the things that i did in preparation for ramadan cleaning the house um, I've still got a few bits and pieces to do so I'm going to share with you guys that as well and also one or two recipes inshallah for what we're going to be having for iftar so I hope you guys enjoy this vlog and as per usual I will try to include as many resources in the description box down below as I can beginning with this Quran um, I will have it linked down below but I noticed that a lot of mosques have this Quran so if you go to your local mosque and you ask them either if you can like purchase one from them or if you can have it for free don't just walk into a masjid and steal a Quran okay make sure you ask but I have noticed here in the UK that a lot of masjids have this um, Quran so if you're looking for it and you can't find it online you can get it there um, and this is the one with the Arabic as well as the translation and the transliteration okay okay so let's just begin so Surah Ali Imran starts with Alif Lam Mim. These are letters that we don't know their, their meanings. So Allah knows best as to what those mean. And it begins by saying Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the self subsisting, the supporter of all. It is He who sends down to thee, step by step, in truth, the book, the Quran confirming what went before it and he sent down the Torah for Moses and the gospel for Jesus. So that is why the Christians and Jews are referred to as the people of the book because the book that Allah sent to them, the Torah and the um, gospel, the original Bible, were books of truth during that time. The reason why Muslims don't follow the current bible especially and what that says and why we don't follow the torah um, which is the books of the jews is because allah after that then revealed the quran so we believe that the quran is the complete version of all of the other religions that came before the religions that believed in the oneness of allah because although the christians believe in like a three in one you know the father the son and the holy spirit Ultimately, they also believe in the oneness of Allah because they believe that there is one creator, likewise the Jews. But for us as Muslims, we don't believe in a three-in-one God. We believe that Allah is one and there is no partner in our associations with him. None of us are called God's children. We just don't use such terms in Islam. And one of the reasons why is because Allah says that for you to say that is a grave sin. For you to say that Allah has children. We are not Allah's children. We are his slaves. But not enslave, enslavement in the way that we perceive enslavement to be. As in having someone above you who oppresses you and controls you. That's not how Allah refers to us when he says that we're his slaves. We're his slaves in terms of the fact that he sent us onto the dunya to worship him. And for that, he will give us reward. But if we choose to follow the shaitan's path, then there is also a consequence for that. So, continues to say, before this, as a guide to, my, to mankind, and he sent down the criterion. The criterion is a way of you being able to judge between right and wrong. So the Quran is a criterion. If you want to know what should I do and what shouldn't I do, all of it is in this book, it's in the Quran. The problem that I always say that most of us have why we don't know our deen is we've never actually bothered to read the Quran before, not in a, even in a language that we understand. 
And even though you can't understand the Quran fully, you need someone who has studied it for a very long time to explain a lot of the backstory to a lot of the verses that you read. But at the same time, if you read the Quran in a language you understand, you will get a general idea for what Allah is saying. You can't depend on other people to tell us what Allah says. The book is right here and he's made it easy to read so that we can understand it ourselves. So if you don't have a target for reading Quran this Ramadan, you must try to because this is where you're going to know what you should and you shouldn't do. If you don't read the Quran, you will never know what Allah says you shouldn't, sh you shouldn't do. We will just try to use our intellect and our intellect is not enough for us to, to judge. If it was, we wouldn't have the Quran. So, then those who reject faith in the signs of Allah will suffer the uh, severest chastisement and Allah is exalted in might, Lord of retribution. So Allah is saying here, those who reject faith, those who reject Islam, there will be consequences for that. Allah doesn't force us to accept Islam. He gives us a choice. But with every choice, there comes a consequence. And that's one thing that we don't have control over. Next page. Verse 5. Allah says, From Allah, verily nothing is hidden on earth or in the heavens. He it is who shapes you in the wombs as he pleases. There is no God but he, the exalted in might the wise and again here's a reference to how he forms us in the wombs of our mothers it's so interesting because if you look at the science of how a baby is created we all start off as this one little lump and as the months go by we develop into human beings and it's quite amazing the power of Allah he it is who has sent down to thee the book basic or fundamental it is clear in meaning they are the foundations of the book. Others are not entirely clear, but those in whose heart is perversity follow the part thereof that is not entirely clear. So Allah is saying here that the Quran is clear, but those who live a wayward life, the path that they follow is not clear because it's not the path of the Quran. Seeking discord and searching for its interpretation but no one knows its true meaning except Allah. And those who are firmly grounded in knowledge say, we believe in it, meaning we believe in the book, the whole of it is from our Lord and none will grasp the message except men of understanding. So Allah says that as believers, what he's, the lesson he's trying to teach us here is that we believe and we, would, we should be saying that we believe all of the, in all of the Quran. It's not picking and choosing which part of the Quran you're going to decide to believe in just because it suits you. You know, it's not this part of Islam I like and that part of Islam I don't like. If you're going to submit yourself to Allah, you have to submit yourself wholeheartedly. You have to accept all of this wholeheartedly. So he says that those who believe, they accept all of the Quran, right? And no one will have that type of acceptance except for those who have true understanding, those who have been guided by Allah. Our Lord, they say, let not our hearts deviate now after thou has guided us, but grant us mercy from thee. So this is the dua of the believer, that we should be asking Allah to keep our hearts guided to the right path and firm upon the right path. Because it's possible that you may believe now and you may wake up tomorrow and decide you're not going to believe in Allah anymore. Guidance is not in our hands. Guidance is in the hands of Allah. However, we have to make the effort. The effort is what Allah is looking for. He knows that we're not perfect. We're never going to be perfect. But he wants to see us trying and we have to consistently seek for ways to try to improve. And one of those ways is to pray for Allah to keep us on the right path. Because many are those who were once Muslims and they are no longer Muslims. So it's a gift to have guidance. So we must ask for that guidance. So that is section one. I will stop for now so it doesn't get too long. Inshallah, stay tuned in my next vlogs. I'll continue to share more of Surah Al Imran this Ramadan, inshallah. It's a really... It's a surah that I find has a great impact on my heart in terms of the way Allah speaks in this surah is very point blank and serious. There are certain surahs where Allah shows more, more of his merciful side and he consistently does that throughout Surah Al 
Imran, Ali Imran as well. But in this surah particularly, Allah just gives you the message the way it is. Like this is who he is and either you accept it and gain the rewards or you reject it and you get the consequences of that. There's no two ways about it. And sometimes that's exactly what we need because I think sometimes we're a little bit too relaxed about this deen. We lean too much on the mercy of Allah and we forget that Allah is also severe in punishment. You can't take Allah and his religion as a joke because really the joke is on us. <laughs> you know, the joke is on us. You might not wake up the next day and then who will be laughing last? So may Allah keep us rightly guided and upon the straight path. So now what I'm going to share with you guys is um, some of the things that I've been doing so far to prepare for Ramadan in terms of cleaning the house. I was going to post a Ramadan preparation clean with me video but I did not complete it on time so I'll share some of that with you and then I'm going to go and prepare um, the meal for iftar for today so come with me. Oh no I've forgotten. Yes that's what I'm gonna do that's fine. So after I've shown, shared with you guys what I've done already we'll just continue the video in the kitchen so let's go. So a few days prior to Ramadan, I had started off my cleaning and I always start with making sure that I give the prayer mats a good wash. I put them on the delicate wash and that seems to get it clean. Um, and then I tumble dry it afterwards and alhamdulillah nothing happens to them and they turn out pretty well. So that is the first thing for me to do. After that, I move on to my pantry. My pantry is always a work in progress. It's tidy one minute, messy the next. So the first thing that I needed to do was to remove everything from the baskets and then throw away the bits and pieces that I did not need, things that had just expired, things that I wanted to put away in my storage cupboard um, outside of the house. So I removed everything from the first basket and then I started putting things back. So the first basket was like my iron, um, a few soaps and hand soaps and you know body washes and things like that so I put all of those in one basket so that is easy to identify the next basket would be for random things like paint um, plastering things and random stuff basically but I know what it's for and this is the most important thing with your home like it's one thing with it looking aesthetically pleasing and it's another thing for it actually working out for you as long as you and the members of your household know what's in each box then that's all that is important so in this basket I made sure that I put all of my bits and pieces for my vacuum cleaner as well as a few hand um, towels and then I moved on to working on my spices my spices well, sometimes they tend to finish and sometimes they're not finished and then I buy another one and then I just end up with little bits and pieces. So I just made sure that I had a good look at what I had and what I didn't have so that I could top up. These are some of the more natural herbal remedies that I like to make teas out of and drink and I wanted to make sure those were at the front so that I use them up before they expire. And yeah, just give everything a good clean and reorganise things really well. Um, pieces like my pink Himalayan salts and things like that, I really wanted them to be at the front so that I use it all up before I buy another one. Um, so yeah, that's just what I continue to do with this basket. Next I moved on to another basket and in here I place all the random bits and pieces of items that I just don't know how to organise. <laughs> so things like my water bottles, um, certain cleaners and things like that, sellotape, you know those random type of stuff. So yeah, here is all of my organisation pretty much done for my pantry. After that I moved on to my kitchen. My kitchen was a slight mess. Um, for the most part I keep my kitchen quite clean but I had just done um, cooking on this day so I needed to tidy up. There wasn't too much to do, I just needed to make sure that I had the washing up done and I really wanted to focus on one of my uh, Le Creuset pots. That pot is really really good for preparing meals that you really need the heat to be contained in very well. 
however it is a very high maintenance pot and it needs a special way of cleaning so I went on to do the washing up and just made sure everything else was nice and clean and out of the sink so that I had the space to focus on my uh, Le Creuset. So if you have one of these um, cast iron pots, listen up. So the way that I clean this is I soak it up with lukewarm water and I fill the water to the very top as you guys can see here. And then I get rid of that and I clean around the pot. On a normal regular basis, I would use sieve, you know, the cleaning product sieve to clean around the pot and inside of the pot. But on this day, since I had this really black food stain stuck on it the way that I do it is you get white vinegar white vinegar and then I add some um, baking soda or baking powder and I just allow that to steam up and then I use the plastic spatula and scrape off the um, burnt bottom part gently okay once you do that all of the bottom part will start to come off so I did that and then the washing up was done so I put that away it was getting quite late on this day but I still really wanted to continue my cleaning and the floors had to be done some of you guys ask me how my floors stay so like my rug stays so clean I just stay on top of it and I have this Bissell um, rug cleaner it does an okay job but I think there are better rug cleaners out there and once I move to a bigger house I will be buying um, a better rug cleaner but I fill it up with the cleaning solution and as you guys can see it really does get the dirt off and that's how I keep on top of it. Right moving on I also wanted to make sure that I had cleaned the inside parts of my drawers. I keep prayer mats and other bits and pieces in, the, in these drawers so it was essential that I made sure that the inside inside was also clean so it was essential that I made sure that the inside was also clean so I just went ahead and um, vacuum cleaned that and then started to put everything back my prayer mats were all nice and clean by this point so I put everything back and yeah alhamdulillah it's so refreshing to pray on clean prayer mats Okay, after that, I just wanted to do one quick deep cleaning activity, which is to make sure that I got rid of the cobwebs that tend to build up on the corners of the, um, the living room area. After that, I also moved on to hoovering my sofa. This is something that I do on a regular basis. I rarely eat on my sofa, but I don't know how all the dust and crumbs and things just end up at the very bottom of the sofa and now as I was cleaning it I just realized it wasn't getting the dirt off as I wanted to so I changed the setting on the uh, vacuum cleaner and just went in with a deeper uh, suction and that seemed to get the trick and literally just pulled off all the dirt and bits and pieces off of the bottom of the sofa um, yeah that was very satisfying for me to watch <laughs> Okay, moving on, I went ahead to also clean my pillows. They had like bits and pieces of like, you know, fabric and stuff on it. So I got rid of that. And alhamdulillah, it's just these little things that keep your home looking just neat and proper. So yeah, that just looks so good to me now. I just couldn't wait to sit on there. So alhamdulillah, I now have a clean home ready for Ramadan 2022. Like you guys, I was just pretty excited for Ramadan. On the first day of Ramadan, which was the day that I recorded this vlog for you guys, we moved to the kitchen. And as you guys know, I love listening to an Islamic lecture as I get my um, household activities done and the fridge really needed a good cleaning, okay? So I made sure that I took everything out of the fridge as always. Um, and then I use a disinfectant to spray the fridge and then leave it for some time and give it a good wipe. Normally I would also remove the like containers that stay in the fridge and I would give them a good wash as well. So I did that with the containers on the side but the big one at the bottom it was enough for me to just spray it down and give it a good wipe. So that's what I did alhamdulillah and you know what a fridge is a place that you're 
constantly going to be using in the month of Ramadan considering how much food we prepare and things like that so it's always a good idea to deep clean it and always a good idea to disinfect the fridge um, obviously we keep food in there and we want to make sure we're not getting sick or anything or you know encouraging bacteria to grow so a fridge is somewhere that has to remain for the most part pretty clean so once I was done cleaning the fridge out I placed everything back in my fridge and to be quite honest my fridge at this point was quite empty there was still a lot of shopping that I needed to do um, in order to be prepared for Ramadan next I'm going to share with you guys the recipe that we had for the first day of Ramadan inshallah Before we do that though, it was time to pray and as you guys know, I shared with you a video on some good deeds that you can do this Ramadan and I'm just trying to stay on top of my good deeds. So praying Salah and performing some extra rakats was something that is on my Ramadan list. So I did that, Alhamdulillah, and then I went ahead to start making dhikr, continued listening to um the episodes from Mufti Menk and now I'm going to begin to prepare iftar so we're going to have a watermelon drink for iftar so I begin by cutting up half of a watermelon and then I cut up the watermelon further into smaller pieces and then I go ahead and remove the seeds from the watermelon this is such a refreshing drink guys I highly recommend it although watermelons are a little slight small Although watermelons are a little bit more expensive than usual um, at this time of the year, but nonetheless, it's nice as a treat every now and again. So I cut the watermelons further into smaller pieces and then I'm going to blend it in my Nutribullet. To that, I'm going to add half of lemon, uh, no, this is lime, half of a lime juice in there and a little bit of sugar. I was fasting on this day so I really couldn't taste the watermelon but if the watermelon is already really sweet then you don't need to add any type of sweetener to it and it would have been nice to have a more natural sweetener but the sugar was all that I had at home so I went ahead and used that. So I blended it, the um, watermelon really well and then I just poured it into a container and I did that twice to get this amount. So to that I'm also going to add some mint leaves and I just wanted to stress out my mint leaves a little bit more so the flavors can come out um, so I did that and then I went ahead to pour the watermelon juice into another jug I added my mint leaf to that and then at this point you can add regular water but I wanted to have that kind of like fizzy drink type of a taste to it so I went ahead and added carbonated water if you're going to have this drink to, um, during the time that you serve your iftar then I recommend you make this drink closer to the time of breaking the fast so that you don't lose the carbonation and I also recommend that you pour the drink carefully because as you can see as I was pouring it the um, carbon dioxide was just rising up and then it was just spilling out so add it bit by bit and this was such a refreshing drink for us to have with our meal so I covered it up and I made enough to store some in the fridge as well and yeah it was just simply delicious next we move on to making the main dish for iftar today and I'm going to make a rice noodle with these stir-fry vegetables so I begin by sauteing my onions I add in my stir fry vegetables, I used two packs, I also to that added some chicken seasoning, I think two teaspoons, no two tablespoons, and two tablespoons of chilli um, powder to that, and I just left that to sit there. Now to my rice noodles I am going to add boiling water from the kettle. I recommend you do this rather than boiling the rice noodles because they do cook very quickly and you don't want to end up with them being way too soggy once you've added it to the vegetable mix and you also want them to absorb the flavour of the vegetable mix. So I did this and I left it there for about 10 to 15 minutes and then I went ahead to add the noodles 
to the pot so this is like a one pot dish it's very easy to make guys and I gave it a good mix and as you can see already it's, it's just looking so nice okay I was like oh okay I couldn't wait to have iftar because it was smelling good and it was looking good all right to that I also added some dark soy sauce um about maybe three or four tablespoons I like soy sauce so you add it according to what you feel is best for you and I just kind of left that on a medium low heat to cook further I put the lid on so that it retained the heat and it came out really nicely okay moving on swiftly I also had to quickly make my uh, bean pudding called akara and we have this with a millet drink called coco and this is something that I love to have in Ramadan I was used to having when I was a child because my parents would always have this to break their fast before having their main meal so I end up doing the same as well so just as I thought I was done with preparing my meals I was like what are we going to have with the uh, rice noodles so I decided to just make chicken very quickly um, I seasoned it with jerk seasoning and a little bit of chicken seasoning and I placed it in the oven. I also added a little bit of oil just to make it easier and yeah that turned out really really good. So I found this hydrating cuticle oil on Amazon um, and it's really been helping my cuticles soften up a little bit because they, they're always dry and I tried to apply this after like cooking or like doing a whole load of washing up after that I applied this just to keep them a little bit soft um, early in the winter as well I started going to the nail salon just to have them like clean up my cuticles for me that's literally all I do when I go there because I don't wear nail varnish and right now I have um, the remaining of my henna on my hands and I was actually thinking of maybe like ordering black henna from Amazon and applying that onto my nails I never wear anything on my nails to be honest, I just moisturise it and I keep it moving but I quite like the black henna on the nails so I might attempt that soon. Right now the remnants of my henna from my wedding is still what's remaining. On my nails, also I just got a couple of um, leaflets coming in and it reminded me that I need to try to start ordering my food like my grocery shopping, do some of it online and have them deliver it to my house because I'm all about efficiency now. I just, there's two of us now, if you're wondering, yes, we're still, my husband and I are here for some time. We will be moving inshallah. Um, but for now, trying to do grocery shopping for two people when I don't drive and then just either having to like ask my husband to come with me so we can carry stuff and bring stuff home. It's just long, I can't be bothered. And I usually bulk shop like at the beginning of the month I get most of the food items and just leave it there for the rest of the month and I cannot be carrying all that heavy stuff so I'm really looking into ordering food online so if you guys do any kind of like online um, grocery shopping let me know which apps you guys use for your delivery this will be my first time ordering grocery items online including like toilet rolls and all the food stuff and that type of thing so if you know of any good apps please let me know i had this one come in it's called uh, bother and they say that they give 20 pounds off your first order so for my uk sisters out there who do online grocery shopping please get me in the know i really want to know a good app to use inshallah um so yeah now what i'm gonna do is read a little bit of this book that my friend Kotho gifted me as my wedding gift is called An Affluent Heart um, and it's a book full of different du'as that you can make for your marriage and each section I believe has du'as based on like the different names of Allah so for example this one al um, the inspirer of faith and the du'a says Ya Mu'min Bless us with your peace and security. Infuse our marriage with love and a tranquil partnership. Strengthen our faith. Grant us steadfastness in practice. Elevate and preserve our love and commitment. When my spouse gets tired and falters, help me support them with prayer, affectionate speech and tender action. So I thought that was really cute. Thank you so much to Kotho for this book. I will be reading it. 
um, I'm just gonna sit here, do that, relax, probably have a nap. You know me, I have to have a nap sometime in the afternoon because I'm sorry, I've been working hard and I need to rest. So that is what I'm going to do for the rest of the afternoon. And this vlog will probably end with me falling asleep on my sofa as I always do. But yeah, I hope this shows you guys or gives you a little bit of a glimpse of how I'm spending my Ramadan. Nothing has drastically changed for me now that I'm married. I'm used to managing at home. So for me, it's just like a little bit extra that I have to do. Like I have to consider what my husband's gonna eat and not just what I want to eat. So it's little things like that. But apart from that, I'm doing good. Alhamdulillah, I'm doing good. So yeah, I'm gonna have a read now and relax. <laughs>